Vishali, welcome to the mock interview. Thank you, sir. Vishali, tell us uh, briefly about yourself, your academic qualifications, your uh, work experience, if any, and uh, your main hobbies. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, I'm Vishali Jain. I was born and brought up in Delhi. And I graduated from Delhi Technological University in the year 2015. And after that, I completed my post-graduation in mechanical design from IIT Delhi in the year 2018. And after that, uh, I appeared for engineering services examination on the basis of which I have been allotted border road engineering services. And I am expected to join the services in September. And after, uh, this is my civil services second attempt. My hobbies include uh, making Madhubani paintings, paper quilling, and uh, reflective diary writing. You said you had appeared in the engineering services examination. Yes, sir. Oh, and you have been selected. Yes, sir. Oh, excellent. So, Vishali, you are from Delhi all through. Yes, sir. Now, how do you think in the last 10 years, you know, Delhi is, has been infamous for, uh, the, for, for uh, safety of women. Yes, sir compared to other metros. Now, in what manner you think in the last decade, the actual situation of safety of women has changed or any perceptional, perception has changed about, uh, you know, their safety, you know, among women. Uh, what, is your, what is your thought on, on, on these two points? Uh, so in the last ten year, uh, in, in the last ten years, the uh, situation has improved when it comes to the women's safety uh, due to uh, one could be the uh, steps taken by Delhi government. Like uh, the Delhi government has employed uh, eleven thousand marshals in buses after the Nirbhaya case, and uh, around three lakh CCTV cameras have been installed. And also, sir, there has been certain awareness and uh, precautious attitude among the women as well. So, for example, my own experience, whenever I uh, take a cab, I make ensure, I, I ensure that I share the link with at least two or three people. Okay. So, so, so what is the perception also? I mean, tell us about the perception. These are the steps which government have taken. Yes, sir. So, what is the overall perception according to your view among women? Can they can they move around more freely? And uh, can you can you elaborate on that as well? Yes, sir. Sir, after the Nirbhaya case, uh, the, that was a, a blot on the image of uh, Delhi, as in when compared uh, compared in the uh, scenario of women's safety, and uh, it really. Uh, got the people thinking that women are really unsafe and uh, there is a perception uh, and I have talked to a number of friends who have been from other cities as well in IIT Delhi and they uh, they are also of the uh, same uh, opinion that they do not feel safe uh, in Delhi but uh, since we are uh, moving in the right direction though slowly, but uh, I am hopeful that we'll be able to uh, provide a better environment to our women in the country. So Vishali, you are very well qualified. You have done B.Tech in mechanical and automotive engineering. Then you have done mechanical design from IIT. Uh, now, you are the best person to be asked about uh, the electric vehicle revolution. Now, with this electric vehicle thing coming very fast, now, how do you think that the conventional, uh, you know, vehicle ecosystem will get affected, number one, and in the race for bringing in electrical vehicles at the earliest, is it possible that we may realize that there have been some mistakes you know, in, in a hurry that we have done, and there are some negativities of bringing this EV revolution, which should have realized, which should have been realized now. 
can you factor or can you think of any such negative things about this revolution uh sir coming to the first part of of your question that the impact on the conventional vehicles that it is going to uh, have sir uh, in the present scenario we cannot uh, suddenly uh, stop the conventional vehicles from being on road and uh, suddenly introduce the electric vehicles the change has to be gradual and uh, there has to be uh, the required infrastructure as well for the changes to happen and uh, there would be slow but gradual effect on the uh, conventional uh, vehicles because there have been stricter norms from the government as well for example there's bs6 norms being pushed by the government and uh, sir uh, the bottlenecks or the problems that we uh, realize uh, in the ev policy sir there could be a number of uh, things so firstly that uh, the uh, delhi government has introduced a number of uh, electric vehicles and e rickshaws were uh, popularized uh, among the uh, travelers but the negative aspect to it is that underage uh, underage drivers are driving those rickshaws and which make it prone to accidents and sir secondly we need to take care of the infrastructure we need to have charging points at regular distances and we need to uh, obtain the network of uh, this uh, charging stations and sir thirdly uh, the major uh, input that we require for evs are the lithium ion batteries and country has to import the the majority of the share from uh, other countries and we need to have the technology in place to have in house uh, lithium ba uh, battery manufacturing capacity as well tell me vishali you are the best person to answer this uh, the electric vehicle revolution will it make uh people in the present automotive sector jobless sir so it may appear that it will take up the job of the people who are working in the conventional automotive industry but at the same, same time when we are talking about the electric vehicles revolution uh there would be more number of jobs created in those aspects as well so uh, there would probably be a transfer of, of jobs from the conventional part to the uh, electric vehicle part a zero prevalence survey has been done in india yes, what what exactly is the zero prevalence survey and the results which have come out what message does it give us sir uh, the zero prevalence survey uh, measures the extent of the population that has been exposed to the uh, virus and uh, the the percentage of population that has been found with the antibodies to fight that virus so the zero survey uh, gives the percentage of people who are having the antibodies to fight off the virus at present now the uh, zero survey that has come out has uh, given a ray of hope because a large number of population around 60 to 70% of the population it indicates that it has been exposed to the virus but uh, uh, at the max we can be cautiously optimistic about it because uh, in Jan january also such a survey had come out but after that uh, what we realized was the second wave impacting uh, the country like anything so uh, we uh, we cannot let our guards down at this moment but yes we cannot slow we can slowly uh, resume to the normalcy normal normalcy with certain modifications sir so vishali now i pass on to mr khanna he will now take up the next round of questions with you okay sir thank you good afternoon vishali good afternoon sir uh, vishali madhubani painting diary writing is what you like to yes. do in your spare time yes sir so how does this reflective diary writing uh help you in uh, improving yourself your personality sir in reflect reflective diary writing what i do is i write after i make a particular uh, major decision as per the uh, circumstances and when i reflect back upon those writings i realize uh, i am able to uh, take a more rational stand 
and i'm uh, having that realization whether i was swayed by my emotions or the logical or the rational part was the dominant one while i was taking decisions so it greatly helps me in uh, decision making sir and also it helps me in uh, moving towards uh, making myself a better version of myself i i am constantly working upon my personality through reflective diary writing sir good good and uh, now let's let's talk about uh, technology and disruptive technologies it is said that software is eating the world software is eating the world meaning that e technologies are uh, ruling over the manufacturing system so can would you like to comment on this statement with respect to present day technologies in the world sir as far as the technology revolution in the manufacturing sector is considered we have come up uh, with disruptive technologies like uh, artificial intelligence and deep learning and automation so these are uh, making the processes faster and reliable and the quality is also improving as in when compare uh, as in when we talk about the production of the components or the goods but uh, the other side of the coin is also there Uh, the jobs uh, the, the job requirement for such technologies is high we need high skilled uh, workforce and uh, the low skilled uh, manual operation is being replaced by the machines so there we uh, do expect some kind of job loss there as well sir uh, what are the uses of 3d technology you have uh, you are the best person to comment on this sir so 3d technology or the 3d manufacturing uh, ability that has been uh, in news for a while is uh, the la- layer by layer manufacturing process whereby uh, we can manufacture a 3d component in a single go and we can uh, have different materials uh, advanced materials uh, readily being uh, deployed for the manufacturing and uh, the in this process the prototyping cost for the research and development will also decrease for uh, for example uh, if a researcher is working on a project he or may she may need to have a particular prototype for testing and 3d uh, uh, technology uh, comes very handy in that and also sir there has been uh, progress in uh, 3d technology when it comes to the biomechanics part as well sir uh, okay let's uh, talk about gender issues if you are posted in a district what would you do to ensure gender equality sir in order to have gender equality uh, we need to first understand the uh, core issue of the uh, core issue underlying this problem uh, first one would be the uh, education the discrimination being faced by the women in uh, the education sector by providing them education uh, we can have uh, more able and much empowered women uh, who are financially independent because financial independence for me uh, is the basic bedrock for all other independent or all other independences for the women second would be the sir health sector because uh, around 50% of the women Uh, in india are anemic and uh, we can create awareness among uh, the households using the anganwadi network and the asha workers and uh, have uh, a proper uh, framework in place to monitor the health and regular checkups for the women uh, free shivers can be conducted and sir third one would would be the parity in the economic sphere where glass ceiling needs to be broken and the labor force participation rate also inclu- uh, indicates that the women have been moving out of the uh, economic sphere for a while and it has impacted their uh, their say in the household matters as well so these three foundational pillars need to be worked upon sir now coming to dowry and uh, minutes of dowry there was a recent report which talked of 85% of indian marriages are uh, with dowry what 
steps would you take if in hypothetically in your case if your parents are required to pay dowry how would you convince them of number 1 legal status number 2 the corrective need for the society what would you tell them on the ills of dowry and legal protection that they have got so sure sir dowry is a means to the society and if such a situation arises in my family i would first uh, try to persuade my father on the moral grounds uh, that how harmful it can be for his own daughter for whose well being he is ready to pay the dowry and sir secondly i'll also pitch in the legal aspects of it uh, under the dowry provision act where the uh, the one who gives dowry and the one who takes dowry both are uh, the offenders of the law and sir thirdly i'll also uh, talk about the uh, room side because uh, there are also the stakeholders in the situation and uh, we need to uh, send the message that it is dowry is not something which can be demanded it is not a price tag to a groom it it is not a cost that has to be paid by a father to for the upkeep of her daughter so it it is a menace and it will uh, deteriorate the uh, position of that woman in uh, the other household as well and for the society also sir I, i'll i'm uh, hopeful that my father will be convinced because uh, he is uh, Uh, a bit uh, rational in these uh, aspects, uh, and for the society, I, I'll make sure, sir, that uh, dowry is not a part of the marriage that is being. Okay, okay, very good. Last question: uh, uh, impact of automation on jobs uh, is well known. How would you uh, take steps if you are in a position to do so to create more jobs? What would you do? if automation is taking away regular jobs sir uh, if uh, the automation is taking away the jobs the reason could be uh, the uh, underskilling of the workers and uh, sir second uh, reason could be the uh, on the supply side uh, that the skill uh, training is not available so in those two aspects we can work uh, in this particular scenario Uh, there are number of schemes by the government uh, a seam uh, portal is there uh, skill india program is there under which we can uh, upgrade the skills of the workers and also at the educational level we need to have a consensus among the academy as well as the institutions about the demands of the uh, industries that are being uh, faced by them and uh, skilling of the uh, undergraduate or the grad graduates as per the requirement and sir uh, thirdly we also need to motivate the youngsters to uh, to adopt these uh, skills and technology and uh, for that we need to have uh, awareness programs sir right thank you over to you mr samesh thank you sir yes uh, good afternoon vishali good afternoon sir Uh, can you discuss the reasons for urban floods in india and the ways to minimize the damage caused by urban floods sir uh, the urban uh, flooding in india is uh, partly uh, due to uh, the uh, sorry sir uh, it didn't get me Yes, sir. Uh, urban flooding in in India is uh, one due to the rainfall that we have in uh, largely in monsoon or in around hundred days uh, of the year we get around eighty percent of the uh, uh, rainfall and we are not able to manage or conserve uh, that rainwater that is being falling onto the earth and in the urban areas it has the the soil which was able to store this water is being covered by the concrete. and uh, the concrete uh, is not able to absorb that uh, water and thirdly sir the poorly uh, developed drainage system of the cities has also contributed to the urban flooding in india 
and sir uh, in this regard <coughs> we can uh, look into the afforestation uh, afforestation techniques uh, recently miyawaki technique was in news where urban forestry uh, can be developed in a smaller spaces given the land constraints in the urban spaces secondly sir uh, a new advanced material has been developed uh, which can be used in the road laying uh, road laying process whereby the absorption of the rain water can be improved and so thirdly we can also uh, push for a policy for having the rain water harvesting uh, equipments or the systems in place for the new developing societies so that ma better management of the surface water that is being flushed out on the streets can be there we heard of pegasus pegasus sir uh, it is a uh, uh, is a matter of concern okay. uh, so let me ask you uh, the question okay so it shows that we can't take privacy for granted so do you think we are slowly witnessing uh, erosion of democracy sir uh, intrusion into the privacy and erosion of the democracy uh, at this point of time related to pegasus would be i think uh, would be a decision making in has because there there has not been any inquiry or committee that has been set up by the government to look into the matter and uh, the nso, NSO has also uh, declined any such uh, involvement so we need to have proper facts in place and if the government is using the pegasus for uh, the intrusion of privacy of uh, uh, be the mps or the judiciary or the citizens so then it becomes the uh, cause of concern for the democracy okay. moving on to economy can you compare major macro economic indicators of india with usa and china uh, sir uh, i have not revised the facts uh, as such but the uh, macro broader level you can answer on a broader level okay sir thank you uh, sir uh, the gdp growth rate of india has been dwindling in the past and whereas the china has uh, made a v shaped recovery in its economy and the us has also been able to uh, recover after the second wave of uh, the pandemic whereas uh, what we are witnessing is a kind of k shaped recovery where the impact on some smaller industries is uh, uh, permanent or the industries have been closed down due to the uh, imposed lockdowns and some of the industries have gained from the lockdown as well like the digital economy part sir and uh, sir secondly the inflation part uh, if we talk about the inflation is uh, rising uh, rapidly in india and it is rising rapidly in india and uh, it has uh, recently breached the band uh, kept by the rbi that is 4 to 6% of band it has recently breached that as well and uh, the oil prices are also rising in india compared to the us and uh, china because they have uh, the uh, domestic supply with them to uh, absorb their shocks of the from the oil market so uh, let's uh, hope you get selected and you won handsomely and you are able to save your money as so would you invest in cryptocurrency and if yes why so the legal position of the country in cryptocurrency is that it is allowed and uh, since it is highly volatile in nature uh, and uh, various uh, attacks are also there the cyber security threats are also there i don't think i'll be uh, investing in cryptocurrency as of now because it is in the infancy stage in the country but with proper regulations put in place uh, i'll be ready to invest in it sir good i pass on to chairman sir thank you mr sumesh welcome sir so uh, vishali uh, delhi high court has recently come out with a with a with a with an order saying an observation that courts can enforce the promise made by the chief minister or any government authority in front of public have you heard about it yes sir so tell me uh, what is the the ruling of the 
quote and uh, in what manner do you consider it as a landmark uh, ruling or you think it is not progressive in nature sir uh, the ruling came out in the background drop of the labor crisis migrant labor crisis that was there uh, in the uh, capital during the lockdown whereby the uh, ruling government of uh, aap had uh, promised uh, during a press conference that it will be providing the uh, providing a place to stay for the migrant laborers in the capital and now that the high court has given a order that the uh, such uh, promises should be enforceable because uh, it cannot be counted as a political promise because the uh, press conference and the promise were made uh, consciously and deliberately by the government so uh, i consider it as a landmark uh, judgment because it will ensure the accountability of the political parties in our country and the uh, free the policies or the uh, political promises that are made uh, during the elections or otherwise as well so uh, that uh, that keeps them on their toes to deliver and and that also uh, deters them from not promising anything which they cannot afford uh, like the uh, housing or the tenant policy that was pushed by the government for the uh, was uh, suggested by the delhi government for the migrant laborers Uh, will uh, cost a heavy exchequer for the Delhi government, and if the finances are not in place, the uh, political party should refrain from making such promises. So, in that scenario, I think it is a, a landmark judgment. Sir. So, Vishali, uh, coming to the international issues, uh, Afghanistan matter is still not resolved. It's heating up rather. In in meanwhile, Afghanistan has said that. in case our talks fail that we will seek military assistance from india yes, now what kind of military assistance uh do you think india could give and whether it should consider their request whenever it comes sir uh, as far as the afghan issue is considered the in the past as well the government has shied away from uh providing direct military assistance to the afghanistan and uh, instead it has provided a uh, military assistance to the northern alliance uh, during the taliban one uh, uh, counter insurgency operations now the government of india is providing military assistance in the form of uh, training that we are giving uh, in fact ima is also training the afghan uh, soldiers in afghanistan to counter the terrorism being spread by the taliban and so we are we are also providing uh, uh, the machine guns or the artillery or tanks to the uh, soldiers so that the uh, required equipments are there for uh, the uh, soldiers and sir uh, considering the uh, uh, foreign policy of uh, the government uh, till now uh, i think the government should not uh, intervene militarily into the uh, Uh, issue because that would deteriorate the situation and which is already very volatile due to the withdrawal of us from uh, afghanistan india is capable of uh, doing the military uh, operations into the afghanistan but that should be the last resort when there is attack on the uh, indian nationals or the diplomats uh, there in kandahar or kabul or uh, there is a direct threat to india or the or it causes instability in uh, the northern northern region of our country that is kashmir so in those cases that, uh, but uh, the military uh, intervention by the country should be the last resort sir so vishali uh, we are through with our questions but the last question could be a question from a subject of your choice sir the subject can be te uh, technical as well sorry sir the subject can be technical as well technical question uh, yes uh, the uh, i have done masters in uh, design uh, mechanical design so uh, tell me uh, the the you know the uh, the designing of aircrafts 
you know has been going on changing very frequently maybe in terms of increasing the speed or reducing the fuel consumption or maybe any other consideration now recently there had been some accidents also because of uh, you know some particular models of aircrafts you know we saw in one or two countries now tell me when it comes to designing of a aircraft is safety more important than the saving of you know energy or for that matter you know taking you faster to the destination how would you rate the three you know parameters when you think of any new innovation in whether aircraft or in a even in a in a motor car in a vehicle how do you uh, see this as as a as a threat to you know the the security and safety of the passengers so as you have rightly pointed out the constraints in designing any uh, aircraft the safety of passengers the uh, cost saving in terms of material or the fuel or the uh, speed of the aircraft sir i think the safety of the lives have the par paramount importance in any design because that beats the uh, if that is not taken care of that beats the basic purpose or the uh, functionality of the equipment that we were developing for we were developing the aircraft for people and if it is not able to save the people or keep people safe then we are defeating the purpose and sir uh, for me the second reason uh, the second priority uh, would be the uh, trade off between there exists a trade off between the uh, fuel consumption fuel saving and uh, the uh, speed of the aircraft because as i make this uh, aircraft lighter and lighter so that it uh, encounters le lesser drag when it moves into the air so i need to have a uh, lesser factor of safety for that but beyond a certain point we cannot decrease the factor of safety in our design so there exists a, a trade off between these two but uh, after that also sir that would be uh, dependent on the operational feature of the uh, aircraft uh, if it is a fighter jet it has to be fast it has to be quicker in order to save the li life of the pilot but in case of uh, traveling i think uh, we can manage with the advanced technologies like biofuel was recently developed by the drdo being employed in the aviation uh, aviation sector so that the fuel cost can be saved so the technology can take care of these constraints we can be fast uh, and uh, fuel efficient at the very same time so, so do you think do you, uh, this perception and this view of yours will you apply to the bullet trains also in india for speed we are investing so much of money and also maybe i mean god forbid but the chances the probability of uh, not being safe you know goes up as you make the speed more and more what are your views so for the bullet train as well uh, the lives will be the first priority and for that uh, if we increase the speed we have efficient braking systems into those uh, trains the braking system in bullet trains are far more efficient than conventional trains so if we are uh, increasing the speed of the train by design we are also taking care of the safety by some other parameters sir. like the traction control is there traction control motor is there uh, and the braking system is more efficient and in order to increase the speed we can simply do that by uh, Uh, employing uh, advanced materials into the uh, structure of the train or decreasing its weight or shaping in, it in such a way that the drag force or the resistance from the air is less or uh, creating a hyperloop the hyperloop technology that is there so we can do that sir without uh, jeopardizing the uh, safety of the people so vishali we finish our formal interview now yeah vishali uh, these six years uh, uh, you said you you are already working now in uh, some organization isn't it sir i have been allotted border road engineering services but i am expected to join in this september sir 
Okay, okay. So you, as of now, you don't have any work experience. Okay. Okay. Now, reflecting on your performance, I am really glad. Means we discussed a lot on various issues, yes. and uh, starting with your reflective writing, yes. you addressed that issue very well. Three D technology, then. Uh, gender equality in your job yes. now here you could have probably you know uh, added couple of more uh, points you only mentioned of two two or three areas where you what you would do but then gender equality in the district where you are posted if you want to have gender equality so you will have to think of the health education you didn't mention uh, much about the health asha workers is all right but then uh, overall monitoring is very important so nothing can be done till you monitor and uh, measure all right so gender equality most important is that in whatever position you do you will see the progress address the issues and then come back to the uh, new solutions all right so that only one one uh, point dowry you address very well there are number of laws and uh, rules on the subject so it is uh, nothing to do with the social system so you you can refer to the laws also which which particular laws are there that prevent uh, you know that make dowry taker and dowry giver yes sir so it would be good to refer to various laws when such a question is asked all right then job creation and uh, automation era excellent uh, because ultimately productivity will improve by automation alternative jobs can be created by upskilling so you you talked of both the areas excellent then one only one question where i expect i thought you did not understand the question was uh, this statement software is eating the world i wanted you to comment on this yes, now sir. what is software is nothing but uh, the power of uh, electronic that is the software which is eating even the hardware so today you have one telephone which is replacing number of other hardware uh, instruments yes even in the auto automobile sector it is said 40% will be software that is electronics so just uh, had you taken a small break and thought over it you would have definitely got the reply so advice here is that in such a question question which is very general yes, no hint is given and you are made to give a comment this is to test your analytical ability on the spot so take a break think for 5 minutes think why software is eating the world hmm? eating the world in the sense that now it is taking over where uh, there used to be a hardware where there used to be machines so only this aspect where i thought you uh, you have... talked of everything but you did not talk of electronic and the core of the question sir yes even yes. after answering the question i realized that i missed the core of the question so yes I... so i i thought that that was one thing you missed rest all you have very good personality you, very uh, good communication you were looking confident you were talking confidently and uh, the very fact that when chairman asked you for a question you dared to say that uh, ask anything on technical and he asked a beautiful question means to ask this question one has to understand you know the that was a wonderful question even heads of uh, vinod ji for uh, this question that you asked her uh, you know on designing of uh, aircraft or designing of bullet train 
I was designing number of uh, trains. I was in charge of integral coach factory, and our biggest problem was the designing technology was missing. So we were using a conventional system. Till you know, when I reached there in 2011, I said we have to make a change. So we started interaction with the public sector, and what trains you see in. Uh, Mumbai suburban, the design, the logo of ICF, and subsequently now they are making bullet trains as they uh, as are uh, being used in Japan. So ergonomics, you know, maximization of uh, speed with the design. I think this was the core of his question. Can you design so that you can maximize the speed? by way of designing itself so you you gave a very good reply and heads off to you vinod ji for uh, this wonderful question that you asked her she could not have got this kind of question from anywhere else but uh, uh, luminary like vinod <laughs> over to you vinod ji i was very impressed with uh, vaishali thank you sir Vishali, same here. It it was an excellent performance. I am very very happy. It was it was on the whole, you know, one of those uh, textbook interviews. Uh, did exceptionally well. Uh, you have a good personality, and you match your personality with good knowledge and good delivery, good communication. so in fact everything was was very good uh, you know in your today's performance uh, to make it more elaborate you your approach is very balanced which is a very important aspect you know for the civil services interviews because at times they put you in a, a spot you know where you have to give your views your views were very balanced your technical knowledge of course uh, was very very good uh, you answered the last question and uh, your current affairs is also very strong uh, your questions related to views and situations uh, was also very good uh, because the questions can be of two types one is that you know you share your knowledge and the other is that you share your views so when it comes to views we have seen you know in our experiencing from the mock interviews like this that the candidates they do very well in sharing the knowledge and relating some current affairs and all but when it comes to a situation and views they are not able to articulate they are not able to structure they are not able to organize uh, well within the time and with the result that it comes with a you know, either a very shallow answer or very unstructured answer so here you also Uh, scored very well and did very well. Um, your reply on the courts, as in considering as a landmark, giving reasons, was really laudable. Uh, your zero prevalence survey analysis was also very good, very balanced. Uh, so in all, uh, Vishali, excellent performance. Now, couple of things to improve you further, right? Because ultimately, what matters is your main interview. and you should do even better than what now i do not know i you were confident throughout but just as a matter of curiosity in the first you know one or two questions uh, were you were you a bit nervous that is my first uh, question to you before i come out with something more so there was a kind of anxiety before the interview because this is uh, one my first mock interview but uh, those butterflies in the stomach that is a normal thing right yes sir after okay. that uh, i was after the first question a uh, general introduction that really okay. yes you recovered very well yes so as such you did not show much of your nervousness uh, and you were not really you were not i knew that but even if suppose if you had any such feeling yes. you know you must start with a bang you know you should not uh, uh give this impression that you are you can succumb to you know this nervousness 
so that is one my second uh, advice to you is when you, i was asking you about the the security and safety of women in delhi you gave your own example yes sir vishali avoid giving your examples okay. never do that okay. you mentioned that when like sir when i go to uber and uh, uh, ola i do this i do i share my location and all you mentioned for some as a system so today there is a technology yes, sir. in the yes, mobile sir. phones smartphones have got this facility that they can anyone can share one's location yes, and all the details to your near and dear so that they can keep so avoid using your example that is number 2 yes, thirdly in one of the questions asked by mr sumesh india us china when you answered you answered it absolutely fine maybe you were not able to give any uh, statistics or data as and all but you started regretting in the beginning itself yes sir I, don't, I, do, don't, don't do that yes. no don't put your worst worst foot forward <laughs> i mean you don't have any worst foot but idea basically is that you should not regret till the time you are not able to answer properly and you stop in between so don't show your weakness right in the beginning because if you had started the answer yes. and completed it we would have just thought that all right she did not give much statistic but she knows the trend that is what mr sumesh also mentioned so there was no need for being regretful right at the beginning especially when if you know the question if you do not know the question then of course you will have to say no you can't hoodwink and and say anything yes. and lastly uh, vishali just in the last one or two questions i saw uh, that you were slightly longish you know in your explanation about the you know the mechanical design generally it happens you know jab aapka bahut favorite subject pe question puche lagte hain to it is uh, you understand my point yeah. is to overcome this temptation yes sir and, and even in courts wala jo matter tha us pe bhi you you must know where to stop and when you have answered the the main points of the question then you should uh, avoid giving extending it to other areas and sharing more knowledge so that sharing of with your extra knowledge may may boomerang may not be very you know uh, in your interest because you know the people in the interview board there are experts they know what the answer is they know what they expect from you as a balanced answer so the moment you start and the moment you you know spend 30 40 seconds on your answer wo samajh jaate theek hai theek hai vaishali is that's right but the agony is that you can't say okay vaishali stop it stop it stop it they don't do it they keep you hearing till the end now that does not mean that they want you to keep hearing and somebody will nudge you and say ki all right nobody will do it they will just have a blank face they will not even do nodding and you know okay no validation don't look for somebody that shaking no 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 this is not answer or right answer they will all be blank blank expressionless it is you who has to stop yes. if they want to ask ask you something more they will say so what else vishali anything more yes, yes sir is there a question here uh, sir this these longish answers were towards the end or throughout the interview last question last question so vishali you have really impressed us and uh, we have considered you for 67% uh, marks today okay now which from our standard is very high very good from upsc standard also and we have given maximum up to 70% so far so you are that material who, who can go beyond 70 also i can bet and if you have done your answers uh, your main examinations well 
then uh, Vishali, with this performance, you stand a very good chance of being in the list, final list. Now, any question you have? There, uh, there, like, uh, I, I am into the services, like, I am expected to join the engineering services. And uh, I am appearing for the civil services. So at times, my uh, in like while practicing with my friends, they do ask questions like, "Why are you switching from technical side to the generalist side?" Or you are more uh, uh, appropriate for the technical side given your academic record and you are uh, leaving your subject behind that you have read for so many years. So, sir, how to handle these kind of questions? This could be a possible question, Vishali on you because engineering you're already in a service yes sir so basically you know a question could be like this why from technocrat to a bureaucrat yes so i think it, it is not such a difficult answer you come out with the the positives of the civil services larger canvas public services more, you know, engineering services also part of public service, but then you are restricted to uh, the technical side, dealing with public diversities of job, reach out is very large, and greater satisfaction of serving people. And last but not the least, career prospects, of course. With engineering services, you don't have to mention this point. Yes. But just to ingrain in your mind, yes, engineering services person will not reach to the Secretary Government of India level. Yes, That's true. Yes, he will not become district magistrate yes, if you get it to IS. He will not become Commissioner of Income Tax. Yes, and he will not become Railway Board Chairman. So basically, this is just to give you an idea that the scope of these civil services you have to come out with is just like answering Vishali uh, Aapse Pucha Jai, why civil services? But engineering services ki burai mat kariyega. Don't, don't criticize. Not at the cost of your engineering services. Anything else? No sir, thank you. So all the best uh, Vishali, do well. Thank you, sir. All the best, Vaishali. Just remember that when we talk of design, we talk of intellectual property rights. So look into rules of IPR, CCI, because these are very, very important. And uh, there could be, you know, allied questions on IPR and CCI. Okay. So just thought I'll mention when we talk of design, we talk of intellectual property of design. Yes, so wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. So any other uh, input or improvement that I can make? No, I think everything has been told to you in uh, good detail. Yes. Smallest point uh, even we have covered where your reply was not that, that these questions will be asked. Point was that questions are uh, an indication of your personality how you address uh, these questions. So we have tried to tell you yes. all that, okay? Thank you, sir. All, so the, best. You all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir.